Hello there. Well, they got there in the end. Despite much exchanges of insults over the last five days, the EU27 leaders managed to hammer out a budget deal in the early hours of this morning. Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check back daily. So after all the wrangling and swapping of insults, calling each other the new Brits of awkwardness or blackmailers and the like, at about half past four Central European time this morning, the EU Council President Charles Michel dramatically tweeted out the single word, deal. And he followed it up later with another tweet saying, We did it. We have reached a deal on the recovery package and the European budget for 2021 to 2027. This is a strong deal, and most importantly, the right deal for Europe right now. And at the subsequent press conference he said, This agreement sends a concrete signal that Europe is a force for action. It is about a lot more than money. It is about workers and families, their jobs, their health and their well-being. I believe this agreement will be seen as a pivotal moment in Europe's journey, but it will also launch us into the future. Never in the field of politics have so many people been so pleased at so much borrowing. But you only have to look at the comments under those tweets to see that in between the congratulatory remarks, there are many that are talking about this being a bailout and not a deal, and that it goes against Article 125 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, or the TFEU, in that the transfer of money between member states for the purpose of bailing one of them out is not allowed. And there are also fears expressed of it leading to inflation. Anyway, having looked through some of the deal and the press reports, it's very clear that many compromises have been made, which will leave a lot of people very unhappy. And one of those compromises is the green targets, with The Guardian reporting, The final deal on Monday also swung in Poland's favour, by watering down a demand to link green transition funds to signing up to the 2050 climate target to the consternation of activist groups and senior MEPs. Poland, which stands to gain €37 billion Euros in grants from the fund, plus potentially billions more from a just transition fund to move away from coal, is the only EU member state not to have made the 2050 pledge. Greta say, how dare you? Greta say, no. Another item watered down was the linking of EU funding with member state economic reform. So, free money, or almost free money, with very few strings attached. And linking funds to the issue of the rule of law was shelved for another day something that will upset the human rights lobby where Poland and Hungary are concerned. But the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, will be happy. For now, because this issue will come up again. And the now Frugal Five won something for themselves. By giving way on the size of the coronavirus rescue package itself and the size of the grants package within it, they in return get significant increases in the size of the rebates they get back from their EU budget contributions. So what they gave with one hand, they got back with the other. All sounds rather like a hugely expensive money merry-go-round to me, with the poor old taxpayer getting fleeced for the cost of the bureaucracy. But the EU has ended up with a 750 billion euro coronavirus rescue package and an EU budget for 2021 to 2027 of 1.0743 trillion euros, slightly smaller than initially proposed. And under the agreement, 
the EU Commission will borrow the 750 billion euros for the coronavirus rescue package from the debt markets to be dispersed to member states in the form of loans and grants. And this is ended up as 360 billion euros for loans and 312.5 billion euros in grants for the recovery and resilience facility with the remaining 77.5 billion euros spread out as grants amongst various other EU programmes. And the agreement says 70% of the grants provided by the Recovery and Resilience Facility shall be committed in the years 2021 and 2022. The remaining 30% shall be fully committed by the end of 2023. As a rule, the maximum volume of the loans for each member state will not exceed 6.8% of its GNI. With the loans being repaid by the recipient member state and the grants being paid back by all member states. But I see no limit for the size of grants to any individual member state. Oh, and just like all funds set up to deal with emergencies, there's a lot of forms to fill in to get the money and a lot of criteria to meet, and you won't actually get the cash until at least 2021. After the meeting, the Italian Prime Minister, Giuseppe Conte, said that some 28% of the funding would come the way of Italy. That's about €209 billion, Euros, with €81 billion Euros in grants and €127 billion Euros in loans. Now, the main budget, the MFF, for 2021 to 2027, also contains €5 billion Euros set aside for a special Brexit adjustment reserve to counter unforeseen and adverse consequences in member states and sectors that are worst affected. But it also includes mechanisms for increasing what is known as EU own resources. This is money that goes directly to the EU as an entity. It is EU money and nothing to do with EU member states, except for collecting it and sending it in. One of these is the imposition of a carbon border adjustment mechanism. So if an importer buys something like steel or aluminium made using inefficient coal-fired furnaces, then they would pay a hefty levy to get that product into the EU. As well as a digital levy, where major tech firms like Google and Facebook would pay a tax of maybe 3% to operate within the EU. And both these come with a view to their introduction at the latest by the 1st of January 2023, says the deal. Then there's the revised emissions trading scheme, which could possibly, says the document, be extended into the aviation and maritime sectors. And work will also be done on introducing a financial transaction tax, the so-called Tobin tax that the City of London dreaded so much. So as you can see, the euphemism of own resources means more tax, with the money, all of it, going straight into the Brussels coffers. And all that means is more dosh for the Brussels Eurocrats. In the long term anyway, as to be fair, the extra money from own resources will initially be used to help with an early payoff of the coronavirus loans. Now, many people will look at this and say, taxing Google, Facebook and Twitter, marvellous. Taxing those who import carbon footprint heavy goods, splendid. But even if over time those taxes change people's behaviour, in the final analysis the cost of that tax is always borne by the little taxpayers. It never drains the corporates of their wealth. But the coronavirus package also gives more power to Brussels, not just because of the application process and prioritisation, but also because of it being a significant move towards EU fiscal integration. But when you consider the total EU budget for 2021 to 2027 as being a tad over a trillion euros, 
and factor in that they're going to be engaged in borrowing three quarters of a trillion euros for the coronavirus rescue package, and you realise that the EU budget itself is on the hook for 75% in loans. Now, for all its faults, the UK is borrowing the emergency money it needs already and has doled much of it out. In fact, the latest numbers from the ONS say that we borrowed 35.5 billion quid in June, the third highest borrowing in any month on record, and our national debt now stands at a few quid short of £2 trillion, or 99.6% of GDP. And if the UK were still involved in this messy EU business, we would also be a major net contributor to all those funds and loans well into the future. And going by the old 12-15% to not net contributor figure, that would equate to somewhere between 90 and 112.5 billion euros out of that 750 billion coronavirus fund. And that's without the annual contributions on top, of course. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug, with my mug on it. So what do you think about all of this? Please share and comment, and thank you for watching.